Hi there. This is extremely precious, very special. Perhaps everything that I've done so far in my life may have led me to this very moment. A very special conversation with a very special man. The man, the myth, the legend. Everyone's hero, my hero, A.R. Rahman. Thank you so much for joining in. Yeah, my pleasure. For a person like you who's been taking a flight every other day for every other city, every other country, every other continent, 2020 would have been tough, eh? Yes and no. Um... You know, I think the pressure of uh, traveling, all the stuff is good, but when the whole world is resting and the whole world is concerned about humanity and, you know, our friends and family and other people, uh, underprivileged people, so we... Uh, I don't think it's a priority to uh, think about luxuries, but uh, also spending time with uh, my kids, uh, my family and uh, more close with my close musicians, you know, that's also been really good. Fair point. So, uh, what's the first thing that you're raring to do once things normalize? I'm sitting at my studio and this has been my everything, right? For the past 28 years now. You know, actually, what? 31 years. <laughs> 89. And uh, so, there's nothing has changed. It's just that um, I would go anywhere I want. Like, I want to go to the US. Mm. I just take a flight and go. And I want to go to Dubai or, uh, you know, Europe or London, I would go. And sometimes, you know, for me, things are claustrophobic. I just need a new place to think. But then that's fine. <laughs> sometimes you need time uh, not to think anything, just give mind a rest so that it settles down and can look inward more. Interestingly, you've been appointed as the India ambassador for BAFTA Breakthrough. And I call it interesting because uh, that's the one word that completely summarizes you, pushing boundaries, not only geographically, musically. We were speaking about the continuum, instrument-wise. And even as a person, you were a shy, reticent person, and now you're this big voice in global music. So uh, were your discography to be eligible for that breakthrough nomination, what, according to you, would be the three albums that uh, you would send as entries? Bombay Dreams, actually, is a whole breakthrough for me. That is a big breakthrough. Having Andrew Lloyd Webber as your mentor, who, who never, you know, produces other people's musicals. For the first time, he took another composer and for another culture, so we have to give it to him. Other things I've done, you know, like starting the school, starting this orchestra, and then... Um, and also going into story, film, um, storytelling and um, virtual reality and sensory stuff, like... Uh, Sometimes it's good to be in music and, and also do something else and come back to music so that your, your passion and interest and the fire is still burning. Uh, some people lose it after 10 years, some people lose it after 20 years. For me, uh, not, I mean, it's been part of three generations. You know, my grandfather, my father, me, and now my kids uh, trying to take music. And one thing we have to realize, I tell my kids is don't get intimidated. I was so bad when I was a kid. <laughs> I was pushed in it and I was just like a dummy sitting on a keyboard because my father's friends would uh, give me a job. So because this person doesn't have a father, so he just play a couple of notes and like use some money. You know, that that's how I entered. But then you realize how important it is. And um, that's one thing I taught them, even though they laugh at me, it's like, no, no, no way. <laughs> they don't believe me. <laughs> but I said, this is the truth. I was even worse than you guys uh, when you started. So just don't stop, that's the thing. That's the magic. Don't stop and keep digging and then you go on. Don't stop. Uh, and 31 years and counting, like you said, you haven't stopped. In fact, it's as fresh as day one for you, AR. Uh, so the next question, obvious question is, is there a process to this magic? Is there a method? I think for a creative person, you have to do the same things, but then you have to do it differently. Like Hollywood says, I want to hear something completely different, which I know also mm -hmm. before. <laughs> and say, it, <laughs> say something which I know, but completely differently. So that's the whole idea. And if you look at um, small, small things change uh, how we feel, even though we take it for granted. You know, an instrumental player can change. The inversions which he plays can change. A rhythm player can change stuff. The way you program and land into happy accidents where you don't intend something and something else plays. But you should be open to embrace it. You know, everyone romanticizes this zone, this process where music comes by. 
but we all know that you know for creative people inspiration can come any time has there been an extremely unlikely place where you got a groove you got a chord you got a tune that came in can you tell us that story yeah mostly on the flights <laughs> <laughs> you're having these long flights and then everybody's sleeping and you're in your chamber and your doors are locked and then suddenly something comes and you don't know how to put it because <laughs> You just take your phone and on your vocal recorder and you start singing and then are everything okay here? <laughs> Because, <laughs> yeah, everything's fine. Sometimes you get the groove, you get the feel um, while traveling. It's a beautiful feeling. I think you you're on top of the world, so looking at the clouds or ice packed snow and. Suddenly, something comes up. And completely imagine that uh, there were a lot of uh, serious losses that the world faced as well. You yourself uh, had to face a few personal losses. Uh, how does A R Rahman? uh tackle grief this is a tough part i think you have to realize that we all we're all going to go that's a good part you feel at peace when you think that this life is short and it'll your misery will end very soon <laughs> so that's a that's a inevitable fact uh, which we have to keep reminding of ourselves like right. uh, ourselves and that actually is a um a good thought to nullify negative emotions of anger or jealousy or or you know like spite or you know uh, revenge and all these things can go away if you think that life is short man just uh, move on do your thing let them do their thing it's fine and um, everybody's going to go the good the bad the ugly <laughs> the beautiful <laughs> every foundation of spirituality actually starts with this because when you're praying or when you're in you want to be your 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 mind should be should have undivided attention how would you get that attention because if you have thousand other things oh i had to give this tune here uh, you know this uh, my family thing is happening here my friends thing is happening here i have to give that to anand rai or imtiaz ali or you know danny boyle and or i have to pay the taxes or i have this mortgage <laughs> <laughs> but then there's one thought of uh, your mind which is which nullifies everything is the reality of that we all have to go one day wow no wonder uh, all your uh, songs you know the devotional songs the spiritual songs all of them sound so otherworldly uh, you know beneath all the spiritual serious uh, otherworldly things uh, that you talk about i am sure there is this little mischievous boy who has a lot of uh, sense of humor which lurks inside you because what else would uh, you know uh, explain songs like hamma hamma mustafa mustafa or patti rap for that matter or rockstar my favorite song in rockstar is sheher <laughs> can you tell me how, how, how do you do these songs i think we all have inbuilt humor we have humor and humor is something uh, and and comic or comedian uh, they actually enrich our lives you know they make uh, things much more easier to handle and so music is also like that you know when when you're jamming with people you start a particular phrase and bunny just <laughs> go on to a wrong note intentionally mm -hmm. and make it right by repeating it <laughs> so this happens not only just in uh, the way songs are constructed by even the notes and yeah we all have that and musicians have uh, quite a lot i've seen most of the musicians humorous I, I would believe so and uh, to be very honest talking about all these funny songs masakali was one of them and to all your fans the pandemic wasn't the only thing that hit them in march masakali 2.0 was also something that hurt them quite a bit i must say <laughs> but uh, you know uh, the other genre that you're extremely popular uh, with and i think for people my generation the generation before me and perhaps the generation after me are uh, patriotic songs at this point in time with everything that's happening in the world how significant do you think is being an indian the idea of being born here it's all this uh uh enlightening fascinating and you are very grateful to the creator that you live in a country with um so many different cultures and philosophies and beauty and and you know dance forms and you know music forms and 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 still you know this magic has been glued for ages and there were many adverse uh, things happened but we are still glued to the idea of india together and uh, so the idea of uh, discovering your own self you know that comes from this country it's aged for more than 6000 years 
and i come from tamil nadu i speak tamil and uh, this culture again now dated 6000 years so we have a lot to offer and so smaller things can't divide us and the idea of uh, uh people in the north coming working here or us going and working there and and the idea of creating something together or um creating a song for this magical country where um these amazing people we all stick together that's the idea of india i know i still believe in wow i will just say jai ho to that answer you've heard a lot of music you've composed a lot of music how do you listen to music when you hear music what is it that you listen to does being a musician come in the way of being a regular music lover yeah i think the more you know the the more the things could hinder you as a listener mm-hmm. so if somebody knows how to produce so they listen to my music oh he's not used the best bass drum he's used something <laughs> which is okay i would have put this option he's not used the best hi hats and uh, so he's not corrected this pitch he just left it like that uh, so all this stuff comes in but i um, after a while you just forget all that and i said what is the song collectively feeling mm-hmm. and is it what is the emotion uh, it gives to me so i can relate to any song beyond the language so i will listen to african music sometimes you know i will listen to you know the congress of american folk music which is many things without judging i feel like the spirit of um, what comes from inside is more important and it's strange that we not discovered not even we not in scratch the surface of artists in the world because we've been thrusted upon the ones which are famous which the companies want to you know force on that but youtube and you know spotify and all these things have opened up a great deal of exposure to these smaller artists and sometimes cult artists like i discovered a a american indian woman called alanis mm. a couple of months back and then just blew me away the way uh, it's from another realm of uh, thought of saying something very very crucial in a most beautiful way where it does something to your something which you not discovered yourself but it's awakened by the song and so the world is full of surprises <laughs> absolutely the world's full of surprises and we uh, uh, hope that you keep discovering them and bringing uh, all of them to us uh, how will things change what are the key trends that you foresee in the production consumption distribution and composition of indian music or music in india over the next few years you know i think 10 years back when i won the grammys i said um i hope this inspires the younger generation to discover themselves and and probably come out with their own voice you know everybody is afraid of the one voice and the uh, first time they fail but the failure actually would uh probably enhance your other approaches and then brings you to like what not to do and that's what failure is for me always you know it uh, nudges you to the better path and pushes you so i feel like uh, most of us now now you've seen even in the pandemic i saw famous artists uh, collaborating with indian artists and uh, without any expectations the joy of uh, interaction all that is happening through instagram and youtube and then zoom and all the stuff which is a fantastic thing and uh, some of the teachers in the uk i think some real world class players are mentoring uh, some of the students from my conservatory and and they didn't know about that if you record with them and you feel like this is not the orchestra i know in india they they completely gone to another level and it's such a joy to work with younger people who are uncorrupted who don't have any luggage and they just play for the sake of music they don't see timing and and of course we should not exploit that <laughs> they don't see anything you'd ask them to play without food and then i'd just like have to remind you do you have guys have food no it's fine sir i'm not going this is more interesting than food i said wow and this spirit is something which i never seen um in film music musicians mm. um some of them <laughs> not everybody <laughs> a lot of people are passionate and sometimes you know so that actually pushes us to um create more magic and and there more miracles could happen in the future with with this kind of attitude where they open and they are innocent in a way 
Wow, you know, uh, you brought it back to the world being one family, and that brings back to the idea of India, Vasudeva Kutambakam, that also comes in uh, uh, from Sanskrit. But, you know, uh, uh, the one thing that I wanted to know from you is that we're a business channel, we're a finance channel. For all the young aspiring musicians, uh, how would you uh, advise them to manage their finances, uh, stand up for their rights? I think, first of all, choosing music needs courage. Hmm. And a person with courage and self-belief will only come to music. Otherwise, he's going to worry about, oh, what if I don't have? What if I don't have? What if I don't have food? What if I fail? Is a negative thought, first of all. That means you're not even believing. And jumping into the ocean where... Um, so if you're not good, if you compare yourself with what is out there, become better. Sometimes it takes... I kept saying this, like, sometimes it takes two months, sometimes it takes two years. Sometimes it may take 20 years. And then anybody who goes deep in what they're doing will excel. And that will bring in people. That will bring in your money. That will bring in your uh, fame, everything. So never give up. You can become a teacher. You can become a musician. You can be a producer. You can become the biggest songwriter. Because nobody can buy experience. Nobody can buy expertise. You know, it comes from hard work. Yeah. You've spoken a great deal in the past about how your mother's changed your life. Her contribution has made you who you are. But uh, rarely uh, have we heard you speak about the change that Saira, your wife, and the kids have brought to you. The kids have grown up. They are producing their own music. Now we see them, we enjoy them. So if you could talk a little about that. Yeah, I think uh, when I got married, uh, I mean, I was, it was Bombay. It was 95. I mean, things were going out of proportion, like, you know, from south to north and um, awards and Filmfare awards and all this stuff. I got married at the peak of, you know, there. And so that was actually a negative factor because we couldn't lead a simple life. We couldn't go out hmm. and we couldn't... Everything was private, you know? Right. You can't sit anywhere because people will come. Absolutely. <laughs> you can't go to a cafe. And so I think she got used to that. And, um, and she's been a pillar of uh, support for me. And we are, you know, a mother and father of three children. Hmm. So that is very spiritual. And having children um, is a very spiritual thing for me. It's not just having a child. So uh, my whole uh, idea of having children was different in the beginning. And now it's changed. I, I got inspired by many fathers and mothers, even though my mother is a big inspiration. Um, b before it was like, oh, let's get the right tutors for them. Mm. They will teach them. And sometimes nothing happens like that. You know, they expect you to do that. <laughs> and then you realize like, I've, I've done less as a father, let me do a little more. And that's, that's I think, when, when they actually started um, blossoming. Like my son did a single on Dilbechara. And uh, never say goodbye. And then Khadija started singing again, and she did the Farish Stone song. And uh, then Rahima is still into studying now. She thinks she's she will also come up hopefully. Interesting. I, I, the song that I love the most about from your son is the first one, Mola Wa Salim, uh, uh, yes. was the one that came by. Uh, you know, Ar, the final question before we let you go: What is it like being Ar Rahman? And what are you excited about the future? What are you nervous about? So the biggest, uh, the most adventurous uh, things I have done in the past 10 years is taking the movie. Hmm? Uh, it's, it's 99 songs, getting a person who's not a star kid, but somebody I just picked out just looking at the picture saying that Ihan, but who is, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like I just thought, okay, this kid uh, could be the next superstar because let's put him in. And he's done a great job. A new director called Vishwesh Krishnamurti. Right. And um, I'm a new writer. So that is the biggest, probably the most adventurous thing, gamble I've ever taken. Then uh, more gambles, Le Musk, which is hmm. um, a sensory project. Yep. It's on VR, I've directed it. And it's completely in English, nothing to do with India, <laughs> except yep. me. And that's a bigger gamble. So I feel good about both of them because at this age or, you know, when you're in music and you're being celebrated and all the stuff, to do something else, learning something else actually frees you from fatigue. And it gives you a better vision in music. You can come back to music, you feel 
you see music in a whole new different way because uh, now you're not just a musician but you are a filmmaker and you see uh, in both perspectives as a musician composer perspective as a director perspective and an audience perspective like and now there are new techniques for look if you take um augmented reality or mixed reality there is ambisonics where um it's much more spatial look at this the new continuum oh may i see that wow thin. How, how how is this different it's, from uh, the previous one it, it's thinner and um better built uh, you, you want to make us listen to how it sounds is 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 this possible no it's not connected it's it's still on beta it takes a while to learn this one it's a beast because it's like how you learn a violin without the frets and all that it's easy to control the pitch correct and but it's polyphonic so you can you can use like at least six fingers to play very very interesting things wow constantly learning constantly pushing the boundaries constantly seeking new horizons ar rahman uh, you've done that for 31 years wish you well for the next 31 years probably 50 more years as well but uh, i'm going to take a chance with this uh, 2020 has been a uh, not so good year for the world a prayer for 2021 uh, would you hum a line vellai pookal ulagam engu malarave let the fragrance of uh, white flowers which means peace metaphorically bloom in the world wonderful time ar thank you so much for doing this for me Thank you. Thank you, AR. So that was AR Rahman. Thank you for watching.